Okay. Here we go. The first question is from Håkon Balkan. Do we have a microphone for him? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isvit, for arranging this excellent uh, debate. Uh, I happen to come from Sierra Leone just recently, where we have started a program to train uh, non-physicians uh, performing uh, surgery. And um, uh, this, uh, the, the title of this is, uh, is uh, Maternal Mortality in the Paternal World. In Sierra Leone, they used to have male ministers, and we have been banging our heads against the wall to be allowed to do this. Now they got a female uh, health minister, and she was thrilled by this uh, initiative, and she wanted us to bring this up on a national level to create a huge program. So, uh, Mr. Stöde, you uh, challenged uh, us uh, what we can do, so I will challenge you now. What can, uh, how can you help us to, uh, to uh, develop uh, a program like this on a national level in a country which has the highest, uh, one of the highest maternal mortalities in the world? Well, you know, I think the, the very important thing here, uh, talking about Egypt, uh, Egyptians have to deal with Egypt. And Sierra Leone has uh, a population which is utterly able to take decisions for Sierra Leone. So we have to be able to empower them to take their own decisions. I think time is far passed by somebody from outside saying this is how you should do it because this is how we see you should do it. So in general, what I support is that there should be plans in that individual country, develop in accordance to their ambitions, capacities, um, the potential, hopefully in a democratic fashion, which involves civil society and, and, and the capacity of their human resources, then the international community should come in and support. That's the way we should do it. I think the mechanisms for development cooperation are much more tailored for that kind of uh, progress uh, today than, uh, than a few years ago, but still more needs to be done to empower those national plans, regional plans, that are owned by the people who are going to do it. That's my general answer. Thank you very much. The next question is to be posed by Max. Could Max come forward? Max, where are you? Hello everyone, um, yeah, I'm Max from Spain and uh, well Professor Figo uh, has addressed the issue of the Millennium Development Goals and um, well these goals were made in year 2000 by the United Nations after they acknowledged that the situation of the world was terrible and shameful. Well every year more money is put uh, by the United Nations um, like to improve the situation and nevertheless the United Nations Global Monitoring Report shows that these goals are not just not achieved but they actually get worse every year, some of them at least. So what is wrong in an international aid system that tries to improve the world by putting more money every year but actually they go, the world gets worse. Thank you. Can I suggest, since Mr. Stöder has to leave in a few minutes, if we have any question for him, unless, and then we can, we can, um, we can um, wait a little bit with that question. Unless, of course, Mr. Stöder, you want to... Let, 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 me, let me partly res respond to that question because I think it's a good one um, and there are no really simple answers to it. I think that the Millennium Development Goals is really about a multi-partnerships where there are responsibilities from all sides. And I'll only take one area. Nobody has suggested that we can solve the MDG ambitions only by development aid. It has also be do to be done by the growth capacity and the selection and priorities in the individual countries. But as long as the rich countries underperform on development aid, we're not going to make it. I think that the 
rich countries of this world have pledged to reach 0.0%, 0.0% of their GDP for these purposes, and the average is at 0.2. I can talk about this because my country is at 1, and it takes a great, a great uh, deal of effort to reach that target. But now the target is down there on average at 0.2, and then simply we don't have enough resources to support it. So I think what these figures coming out of the MDG campaign is a stark illustration and wake-up call to countries to live up to their obligations. And that is not going to be more easy now that we face financial crisis. So when you go back home, at least to these countries, you should remind your leaders of the responsibilities of what they have signed up to. Thank you very much. I think it also touches on the difficult issue, should one really make targets? Are they, are they inspiring to efforts? Or are they luring us into unrealistic expectations? It's the whole, it's a, it's a huge debate there. The next on my list is Amel El Ghari from Egypt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my question is directed to uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Mr. Uh, Johan Gastor. Um, actually, uh, I was one of those who started the, uh, the revolution in Egypt. Uh, and uh, a couple of days ago, I was standing here in the same place. Um, speaking in front of His uh, Royal Highness, the Crown Prince of Norway, and I was uh, I introduced myself as uh, an Egyptian free man. And uh, a couple of hours later on, the revolution has completely succeeded, and the regime has fallen. So, uh, yeah. Um, my question is: um, I think the. the the hardest and the toughest part is, is the upcoming one, not, not, not just the one that we have already passed. Um, my question is, uh, throughout history, um, Egypt as uh, a leader in, in, in the region, in the, in the Middle East, uh, has always been leading the winds of a change. Um, we were amongst the, the first countries who got liberated from occupation in the, in the previous century. So uh, do your excellency think that uh, the same situation is going to be repeated um, in terms of having all the uh, dictator dictatorship regimes, either in the Middle East or in Africa, uh, which consequently affects the, uh, the health issues, as we have been seeing through uh, the presentations of the uh, two professors. Do you think that this is a start, or this is just something out of the blue? Thank you very much. Well. You know, I saw one of your colleagues on TV over the weekend who said the following, which made a deep impression on me. We did this by ourselves. You did it. So it means that this was not something which was imposed by some crazy idea of invasion or regime change from outside. It was done by the people of Egypt. That's the tremendous hope. Now the question. Now the question is this. As I, 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 I saw, as I said, this front page of the Norwegian paper saying that freedom is waiting. Who knows? We will see. Great stakes here. You know, one way of putting this is that one retired army, one army officer without a uniform has left the country and a group of army officers with uniform has taken power. That's the reality in Egypt today. The question is, will your movement for freedom and democracy and reforms and constitution, will it succeed to formulate these positions in implementable measures that can make a difference for Egypt so that the will of change can be translated into something which is lasting. That's going to require an enormous discipline of that very broad movement that brought about change. And we from the outside, we have to say that we support that process. And if it happens, Egypt once again can become the great bearer of ideas in this region. In the great Arab world with all the innovations throughout history of mankind from the pyramids and onward and you can change that course where you have for the last decades been under a rule which that was not allowed because your creativity was not unleashed but it's going to be a tremendous challenge because now you have an economic challenge a political challenge and a philosophical challenge to translate into your own original way we from the outside who sympathize with egypt 
and sympathize with these ideas. The best way we can idea is to apply the same principles as we discussed five minutes ago, to support your plans, not impose plans from the outside, because you are going to do democracy your way, and it cannot be imposed by some outside source. But I can, I can tell you, and we will have a debate about this in the Norwegian parliament tomorrow, and I will say it then, we will stand ready to support that civil movement in a way which responds to your aspirations, but with a clear message is that you have to make the change. And if you do that, I think the message from Egypt can be a message of hope throughout the region which is badly in need of hope. I'm sorry, I have to leave because I have to catch a plane. Thank you. <laughs>